I'm Zachary Cartwright. This is Water and Food. Today, my guest is Dr. Milda Imbuscado, who is a distinguished scientist at McCormick & Company located in Hunt Valley, Maryland. She received an Outstanding Food Science Award from Purdue University in 2016 and is an IFT Fellow. Dr. Imbuscado's focus is on materials and processing technology, including powder science and technology, isolation and extraction of flavor compounds from natural sources, flavor encapsulation, and food emulsions. In her role, she routinely uses water activity measurements and moisture sorption isotherms to understand her ingredients and products and also bring new products to market faster. Let's hear what Dr. Milda Imbuscado has to say on this episode of Water and Food. Hi, hi, Milda. Thanks for being on the show today. We appreciate you being here. Thank you for inviting me, Zachary. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I know we've had to jump through a few <laughs> hurdles uh, to get here, but but thanks for being here. Uh, so you're a distinguished scientist at McCormick and Company. What what does that mean? What what do you do there? Yeah, at McCormick there are two ladders: management ladder and technical ladder. So this was created by uh, our previous science uh, officer and. Uh, to 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 make the position more rewarding on the technical side and so to follow up also the progress of the people under the technical ladder uh, he created the different steps to uh, be able to achieve that mm -hmm. and on uh, the technical ladder actually is the highest is McCormick scientist and distinguished scientist is only second to that I see. And, and so what have, do you have, have to do to, <laughs> how do you get to that next level? Uh, probably, uh, you know, create projects that will be very beneficial to McCormick in terms mm -hmm. of product that we put out there in the, uh, in the market. I see. And, and you're mainly working on the product development and, and research development or, or what category uh, do you fall under? Yeah, actually, I am working both on product development, on specialized products, and also I work with product developers on their different products that they would like to commercialize in the future. And this is where the powder science and technology comes in, because that's one of the area of the material science and process technology is uh, very strong on, you know, um, you know, background as far as science and technology is concerned, and also the facilities that we use to enable us to test different products uh, that will be successful in the market. And, and how did you prepare for your role at McCormick? I, I see here that you have a PhD at Purdue, and I, I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about your background and, and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, so uh, I did my PhD in food science at Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, my area of specialization is actually food chemistry. I did postdoc in uh, carbohydrate chemistry and also coupled with that uh, food processing engineering. So it's kind of combination, which is good because uh, I understand the chemistry and the processing technology as well. I mean, as, I as well as the chemical engineer, but at least I understand when they tell me about the process that they're doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and once you finished your degree, you, you went on and you worked as a senior carbohydrate specialist. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so I stayed with the Whistler Center for Carbohydrate Chemistry, and that's where I have the opportunity to work with one of the world-renowned carbohydrate chemists, uh, Dr. James B. Miller. And then after that, uh, I was uh, promoted to research scientist at the Whistler Center. Then uh, thinking about, you know, the application and the commercial side and industrial application of what I learned from the Whistler Center and from Purdue, I was encouraged to go to the industry. And that is where uh, the Sarah Star USA comes in. Uh, I worked there as a carbohydrate uh, specialist for three years before moving on to McCormick. So it's a and starch I, I, company. Mm -hmm. uh, we handle maltodextrin, corn syrup, sugars, and all the different starches that you can think of. 
All right. Looks like you've been at McCormick for about 23 or maybe 24 years at this point. Uh, Milda, what, what keeps you coming back to work? Why, why are you excited to work there? Yeah, actually, 20, 23 years last May. Mm-hmm. Uh, R&D is a really very challenging area to work in. There's always something new. And that, way, that makes me come back every time. You know, there's new challenges. We need to think about uh, innovation and future technology that will be applicable so that the company will progress. And in addition to that, working with the product developers is also uh, enhancing our capabilities individually as professional. They mm-hmm. always have challenges. And one of those, of course, is uh, powder science and technology. How can we bring this particular product to the market without issues? And of course, those issues never end because most of our products are very complex. Uh, Maybe the minimum of 10 different ingredients to as much as 31 or 35 ingredients in that seasoning blend. So each of those ingredients will pose certain issues especially, you know, the different plans for our customers. They have different equipment, different environment. One area is probably on the cooler side of of the U.S. and others will be in the, uh, you know, high humidity, high temperature setting with old equipment that each of our seasoning blend should work on. Mm -hmm. And, And what are some of the other maybe specific challenges that you have to overcome Um, It sounds like you've mentioned a few, you know, having to make products with lots of ingredients and thinking about how those ingredients interact or shipping products to different regions of the country and having to worry about different environments. Are are there any other maybe challenges or issues that you would add to that list? Yeah, we need to zero in actually what the customer have in in terms of equipment and how they apply the seasoning blend. Uh, one particular example is uh, we created this really, really good seasoning blend with a lot of uh, chili pepper in it. And of course, uh, some organic acids and uh, sugars. And actually, they don't stick well on the chips. They stick more on, on the equipment. And so we need to resolve that and we need to resolve that quickly after mm-hmm. the first trial. Because the expectation of our um, customer is for it to work in all their plants and in 24 hours. That's the first testing, actually, and sometimes longer. And how do you use water activity measurements to overcome some of these challenges? How does water activity, why is it important for these types of products that you work on? Yeah, first of all, we need to know the water activity of all the ingredients in that seasoning blend. And they range from moisture from 5 or lower to sometimes 15%. And the moisture content, that's going to tell us the whole story. We need to know the water activity because that is very important in how the moisture transfer from one ingredient to the other component of the seasoning blend. So typically, if you have organic acids and sugar, then you need to watch out the uh, final or the equilibrated water activity of the seasoning blend because you cannot push everything to 0.2, for example, because the other ingredients have high water activity, especially the spices and herbs, which has undergone uh, steam sterilization. And that actually creates a big problem as far as stability during shelf life, during uh, shipping, and also at the customer's plant. So we need to know the water activity of all the raw materials. We need to know the equilibrated water activity, which of course can be uh, given to us by the VSA in one of those, uh, you know, the menu that we can input all the water activity and then we come up with the, the, the software itself will come up with the equilibrated water activity. That's actually very, very useful. Instead of waiting for probably two to three days, until the seasoning blend reaches the equilibration point, we have the VSA to be able to do that for us. 
And, and just to kind of summarize, so it sounds like you're using water activity to check your incoming ingredients, to check once your products have reached equilibrium, and then maybe even to look at water activity during shelf life. And then you just mentioned the Aqualab Vapor Sorption Analyzer or the VSA. Uh, you, you would be considered a, a power user of this technology and you're using dynamic dew point isotherms. Is, is that correct? Or what type of isotherms are you using in order to predict what the equilibrium will be? Yeah, for, for most of our seasoning blends, or probably I should say for all our seasoning blends, especially the newly formulated products, we test the, uh, we use the equipment to test for the critical water activity so that we know uh, points of failure, for example. And with that, we needed to add other ingredients that will uh, increase the critical water activity at our customer's plant. Uh, one uh, particular case that uh, we did resolve quite quickly is, you know, in those uh, encapsulated products, uh, using gum arabic versus a starch actually makes makes a big difference as far as the critical water activity is concerned. And so, without VSA, we won't be able to know that. We will just be saying, "Oh, it failed because uh, the product is really, really very hygroscopic." But with the VSA, we were able to pinpoint what raw material is actually doing that and what are the solutions that it can offer when we uh, reformulated the seasoning blend. So if you weren't using the VSA and if you weren't using dynamic dew point isotherms, would you be using like a guess and check method or, or how would you even go about finding that critical point yeah. if you weren't using this technology? <laughs> Yeah, the old method, of course, is having all those uh, desiccators, right? And then waiting until it mm -hmm. equilibrates with the relative humidity of the desiccators uh, containing uh, saturated salt solutions. And that will take forever. And sometimes you cannot really pinpoint the exact uh, critical value of the water activity because, you know, it, it's difficult. Sometimes it's past that already and you observe, oh, it caked or it is uh, already melting at that point. So even though, uh, you know, it is something that those people don't have the equipment can use it, it's not very efficient. It's not very accurate as well. So once you determine that critical point, are you using it to set a spec and, and then you tell that to your production team so that you can avoid some of these challenges that you mentioned earlier? Or, or what's kind of the next step once you identify that point? How do your other teammates or other members at McCormick use that information to make sure as a whole your team is successful with producing that product? Yeah, what we do is we'll go back to the drawing board. We uh, uh, actually evaluate all the ingredients there. We are we formulated the database already, so there are some old raw materials that we can deduce what it's doing to the uh, to the seasoning blend. But for the new ones or something that we have to use to replace an old ingredient, then we have to really. Um, evaluate all those ingredients uh, in, in closer detail. I see. And if you were, you know, working at a, maybe a, another spice company, if you didn't have this approach, what, maybe you can talk about how having uh, this technology has improved uh, your experience or being able to make products quicker and, and bring them to market faster. Um, what what would, were you doing before this technology and how has it improved your experience um, in your current role? Yeah, actually, before before we uh, bought the uh, VSA, we have an old equipment that we use came from uh, in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, it does give you the moisture absorption isotherm, but it doesn't have all those different parameters that you can measure using so your software. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so we kind of struggle with that uh, particular uh, equipment and technology. And later on, uh, they were not able to uh, update their software anyway, so we we stopped using it altogether. Um, I think it will be impossible with other equipment to do what VSA is doing. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, more like a, mm -hmm. a guessing game. I mean, it's not that exact number that it comes up with, right? 
So you need to deduce based on the moisture sorption isotherm, uh, apply some more mathematical equation to be able to come up with those critical parameters. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you made some really good points there. And, and this is often what I talk to people about the VSA, you know, two things that really make it stand out are the patented dynamic dew point isotherm. It's a really high resolution isotherm that you can make very quickly that can help you identify those critical points. And also the software. I mean, there are other isotherm generators, but the software we've spent a lot of time developing so that you can take your data and turn it into some of the different solutions that you've mentioned, like finding the e equilibrium point or finding a critical point and, and so on. So we've tried to make that really user-friendly, and, and I'm glad that it's uh, been able to help your team. Are, are there any other new products or new formulations that you're excited about that you've been working on that you're able uh, to talk to us about today? Oh, yeah. We have a lot of uh, product developers in our building, uh, and so they develop products almost every day. Uh, in some of those, the raw materials are known, so it's not a challenge to really come up with a stable product. But of course, the customers sometimes request something that is really different mm -hmm. from what they are used to formulating. And so those are the ones that we focus on so that we'll make sure that it will be stable and will not uh, fail at our customer's plant. And are you currently trying to fill any roles? Are you looking for new product developers or anybody else to join your team at this time? Uh, not at this point. Uh, we have uh, the, uh, you know, one of the very good things about McCormick is the turnover is very, very, what do you call this, low level. Mm -hmm, so people, sure. yeah, people stay for a long time, like myself, I thought I'd mm -hmm. be here only for a few years and then move on, right? So there's, it's, it's, uh, it's usual that the uh, product developers, scientists, and engineers stay here for 10, 15 years. And sometimes, in some cases, probably as long as 30 years. It's oh, a wow. very good, yeah, it's a very good environment. And uh, people are really very professional. They help you advance your career in the process. And, uh, you know, we help each other to accomplish what we need to accomplish for, for the company. And what is next for you, either at McCormick or, or maybe in your personal life? What, what are you looking forward to uh, maybe this next year or, or looking ahead? Yeah, actually, we've started a uh, really more goal-oriented program in terms of powder science and technology. So we're creating database of all the raw materials that are, are new, new to McCormick, you know, all those uh, natural sweeteners that we need to characterize so we can use them more intelligently in some of our seasoning blends and food powders. In addition to that, we would like to streamline our testing process in terms of uh, powder flowability, functional properties like adhesion to uh, chips, for example, of, or different matrices. Um, we would also like to uh, be abreast on the new packaging materials, especially those which are sustainable in the market. And so there's a lot of things that uh, we would like to focus on as far as uh, food powders are concerned. And of course, VSA will always play a major part in that because it's a very useful equipment for all the products that we uh, produce in, in dry formats. Well, it sounds like uh, you have a, a busy schedule ahead of you and still lots of things to work on. But like you said earlier, that's what keeps you coming back and, and working for McCormick. So we're excited to, to keep supporting you and, and see how you use your isotherms and, and you're able to overcome some of those challenges. So I just want to say thank you so much, Milda. Again, we've been looking for this for, uh, forward to this for quite a while. And um, I'm, I'm really glad to see how you've been able to use our technology and approach all of these different products that you work on. Um, is there anything I missed? Anything else that you would like to add? to this episode, anything you wish I would have asked or um, something you'd like to end on? Yeah, actually, uh, the, the area that I've worked on at Purdue helped me very much in, uh, mm -hmm. in, in learning all this uh, caking 
and adhesion and all those problems that I encountered in, uh, in food powder and seasoning blend and all the equipment that actually we got from, from the meter group starting with the water activity meters. Actually, when I came to McCormick, we, we ha still have that very old water activity meter in, in, in which you calibrate by adjusting the screw so that it will be exactly, <laughs> exactly that was really, really good. And after that, we got uh, a few more, the, the new ones, including the DDL2 mm -hmm. and of course the BSA. So uh, thank you very much for all your help. And uh, this will be really a very good partnership with, between the two companies, our two companies in advancing uh, powder science and technology. Well, we're, we're looking forward to continuing that partnership and, and working with you. So thanks again, Milda. We really appreciate having you here. And uh, maybe sometime down the road, we'll, we'll check in with you and see what's new uh, with you and, your, you and your team and how you're using those technologies. Thank you, Zachary. I'm Zachary Cartwright. This is Water and Food. Find this podcast on Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.